Sacramento, welcome to the Sleep Train Arena for the Sen California Interscholastic Federation High School Basketball Championships. Up next is the Girls Division I title game. I'm Kirsten Fairchild alongside Joey Gonzalez. Thank you for joining us on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Again, north versus south. Joey, it has been a Southern California type of day here not to mention a heartbreaking type of day. A lot of just bitter defeats for some teams. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of close games. Some great basketball. Unfortunately for the Nor Northern California teams, they've been on the losing end uh, of those uh, great games. Uh, so we'll see whether or not uh, here in Division One, whether or not the Berkeley Yellow Jackets can reverse that trend. This Division I bracket is so very interesting. Such low seeds. Both teams surprised to be here for the most part. Berkeley seeded 12th in the Northern California bracket. Long Beach Poly seeded 9th. And here they are playing for a state championship and meeting one, one another for another time. It has been Berkeley and Long Beach Poly in the mid 2000s for so many years. This is the 12th state finals appearance for Berkeley. They have only two wins and they have their work cut out for them today, Berkeley. Boy, both of these teams didn't even get a bye in the regional no. championships. Berkeley in a rematch of last year's Northern California title game. Berkeley beating Kennedy in the first round, 53-40. You know you've got a tough bracket when you're facing last year's NorCal runner-up in the first round. Absolutely. And, and Berkeley comes in feeling battle-tested, feeling like they have the tools, the, the players to go ahead and bring home a, the first one, their first uh, state title since, I believe, it was somewhere in the 90s. You know, the history, you know, you want to talk about the history, the history between both of these teams. You were talking about the, you know, it was three straight years. Berkeley faced Pauly through 06 and 08, and Pauly came and went way victorious all those years. That was on their run to four straight titles for the uh, Jackrabbits. Berkeley comes in with an overall record of 24 and 12. They finished in second place in their league, the West Alameda County Foothill League. They finished behind Bishop O'Dowd. Bishop O'Dowd currently on a 23 game win streak. Berkeley bringing a four game win streak in, as are the Jack Roberts. Long Beach, Long Beach 28 and 5. 12 and 0 in league. They won the Moore League. And we'll get to talk a little bit more about these two teams as we come back. We're right now concluding our PlayOnSports.com pregame show. Two programs that know each other very well, but they have not seen each other in a while. Still, Berkeley, Long Beach Poly, one will claim a championship here in Sacramento tonight. Stepping away for a few minutes, back with the opening tip and starting lineups. Thank you for listening to PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! 
Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines. How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Live in Sacramento, PlayOnSports.com, covering the 2013 CIF State High School Girls and Boys Basketball Championships. Welcome back. Getting ready for the girls' Division I title game between the Long Beach Poly Jackrabbits of Southern California taking on the Berkeley High Yellow Jackets of Northern California. Alongside Joey Gonzalez, I'm Kirsten Fairchilds. Berkeley High, 24-12 and 12 coming into this one. Cheryl Draper in her seventh year as the head coach. Joey, Berkeley starting a number of players, a number of underclassmen, including their point guard, Jamoni Welch, Jamani Welch Coleman, the 5'2 sophomore. And Brianna Eskridge, the five foot seven senior, she's the shooting guard. Rachel Howard, the five foot ten senior forward. Junior five foot ten junior Desiree Finney is the four. And Gariana Youngblood, the five foot eleven senior, will start at center. Well, that's one of the reasons Coach Draper really feels that no one had expected for the Berkeley Yellow Jackets to be here at this level. She really wants to go out there and have these Yellow Jackets prove something uh, to the state and to doubters. Absolutely. And Long Beach Poly, their starting lineup at point guard, Justin Dawson, the five foot three junior. Tanaya Lamb is a five foot six sophomore. She will start at the shooting guard position. Erica Garden, another guard at Carter, excuse me, at five foot eight junior. Kayla Morgan, the five foot eight senior guard in this four guard system, and the center, the six foot junior, Jada Matthews. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there was, despite the fact that they came in with a low seating in the southern section, still Long Beach Poly comes in ranked seventh in the state in the latest Cal High rankings. So Long Beach Poly really feels an opportunity to, to be here. Ranked fifth by Max Preps. And so long, another opportunity here for Poly trying to reestablish themselves there after missing the last couple of years at this level. Carl Bugs in his 14th year at the helm of Long Beach Poly. As you mentioned, Max Preps ranking the team number five in the state, number 12 in the nation. One of the top teams for sure. Berkeley, very low ranking, if you will, number 40 in the state. And Berkeley's Cheryl Draper saying, you know, this is very exciting. That too, as we spoke about in our pregame shows, they were ranked 12th in their region. Poly was ninth. That it really shows how deep Division One was this year. Yeah, absolutely. When you think about the schools that went over, went on to, uh, to uh, participate in the Open Division, it's really opened things up here for some of these other schools. Nonetheless, uh, I mean, competition has been really fierce here in Division One throughout the state. 
Long Beach Poly comes into this ball game averaging 57.5 points per game, over 30 rebounds a game with 20 steals per game. They like to apply the pressure. Berkeley used to having pressure applied to them. Yeah, absolutely. Berkeley, and they feel, Coach Draper really feels that uh, the Berkeley is set for that. What they're going to have to do, though, is they're going to have to shoot better than the 38% that they shot against Oak Ridge in the uh, Northern Regional Final. That's right, Berkeley taking care of Kennedy in the first round, then beating McClymans before taking out Gunn and then beating Oak Ridge, Long Beach Poly. Well, they took care of the eight seed Fairfax by a score of 80 to 22. Amazing score, considering that they were the lower seed. Then they beat top seeded Etiwanda, which had beaten them earlier in the season, took care of Bishop Amati, and before beating Canyon Springs in the Southern California Championship. Our officials today, the referee is Thelma Ponce, umpire number one, Brenda Osborne, and umpire number two, Alex Carroll. High school girls basketball, eight-minute quarters, 30-second shot clocks, Long Beach Poly. Green uniforms with yellow and white numbers and piping. Berkeley in their home white uniforms with the yellow and red. It'll be right to left. Long Beach Poly against Berkeley. And jumping center for Long Beach Poly will be Jada Matthews. Matthews averaging 7.1 rebounds per game. And she will step into the circle after the teammates the team shaking hands here and she will face off against Desire Finney. Desire Finney, the five foot ten junior forward. Polly controls the tip, goes to work right to left. And running the point, Justice Dawson. Berkeley opens in man. Dawson testing her defender, passes off to a teammate. Beyond the arc, a quick three, no good, but Polly's there for the rebound. Long Beach trying to give it inside. They throw it away, Berkeley ball. Yeah, and it appeared that offensive possession was all trying to get it to the post. That time trying to go inside there. It looked to me uh, from this angle, Jada Matthews. Uh, however, Jada Matthews not able to handle that ball. Berkeley beats the press. And throws it away. Loose ball. Ooh. And it's Long Beach Poly balls. We see some effort from Berkeley. Yes, yeah, some tumbling to the ground there. And right, for Jamani Jum Welch Coleman. Looked like she got up holding her wrist. Welch Coleman on defense, guarding the point guard Dawson. Pass into the paint, turnaround jumper, fade away. Down and through, and the first bucket recorded by Matthews with a minute gone here. Long Beach Poly leads 2-0. Berkeley pushing the pace coast to coast for the bucket. That's what Berkeley's going to want to try to do is get out there and run and force, for, uh, sorry, uh, Long Beach Poly to play transition defense. Eskridge with the lay-in. We're all tied up at two. Long Beach Poly taking it into the paint once again, and a foul called quickly on Gariana Youngblood. And they're going to say that's a shooting foul. So at the line is Tanaya Lamb. Lamb had 16 points in the Southern California Championship game. Sophomore. All of these Long Beach Poly players wearing bright pink yeah, shoes. The, the bright pink sneakers. Makes her first. And her second. 4-2, 640 left to go in the first. Berkeley left to right. Trailing to a familiar foe. Welch Coleman distributing the ball. Eskridge, top of the arc. Long Beach Poly and man and the steal. Off the foot of a Berkeley player. Yeah, it looked to be Rachel Howard out there. And actually not, just, not, not a bad play there by Howard to kick the ball away. 
unhappy with the turnover there by Berkeley and tried to slow down this transition offense here by the Jackrabbits. Howard, one of the best players ever to suit up at Berkeley. We'll talk more about her as the game goes on. 6.20 left to go in the first. Long Beach Poly with the ball in a 4-2 lead. Playing pass beyond the arc. Pass down low. Kicked back out. We've seen a lot of great defensive efforts here in these championships. Not expected. Here's another one of them. Seven on the shot clock. Polly. Working on Howard, kicks back out, three. Long distance three, hits back iron and bounces Long Beach Poly's way. Pass down low, move in the paint. Lovely touch by Matthews, 6-2 Long Beach Poly. Howard, great leading pass, a little too far leading as the Berkeley team turns it over again. Matthews trying to go coast to coast too much. However, Long Beach Poly, what a job they're doing on the offensive boards. Absolutely. Three from the left wing misses, and finally Berkeley looked to have a rebound, but then they throw it away. You know, it looks to me that Berkeley, the youth, is probably getting, they try sometimes play a little too fast, and Rachel Howard, their senior leader, is going to have to talk to the rest of the Yellow Jacket teammates, try to slow them down and just allow the moment just to, to settle them. 5-15. Left to go in the first. Long Beach Poly with the 6-2 lead. We have a kick ball and a reset as Long Beach Poly to inbound underneath the basket. And not exactly sure where the kick came from, but. And Matthews with one beyond the arc. Doesn't fall. And now Berkeley with a chance to run its offense. Lucky that Berkeley was so that she was way off there because Berkeley did not close out on the shooter. You've got to close out on the shooters defensively. And the Long Beach Poly Jackrabbits called on their first foul. That one goes on Lamb and a shooting foul, which sends Welch Coleman to the line to shoot two. Five foot two sophomore, five assists in the Northern California regional win. I think she may still be suffering the ill effects of Going after that loose ball. She took a big spill, and it looked almost like a football play. I know a lot of folks know Long Beach Poly's football team, being familiar with them, and it uh, looked almost like uh, she was tackled out there but uh, was whistled out of bounds. 6-4 after she makes both. Long Beach Poly with the lead, less than five to go in the first. State championships at Sleep Train Arena in Sacramento. Berkeley has played defense well. They've had been undersized on the boards. Big miss down low for Long Beach Poly. Welch Coleman collected, excuse me, Matthews collected, but then couldn't put it through, but drew the foul and she'll head to the line to shoot two. Yeah, that's the, I believe that's the second team foul here. If I, yeah, it's second team foul here Kirsten and what's something that uh, Berkeley is going to have to watch is they want to stay out of foul trouble because if you keep sending the yellow jacket I'm sorry the Jackrabbits to the line it's going to be a long afternoon here for uh, for the yellow jackets. Welch Coleman called on her first foul as Matthews from the line makes both Berkeley inbounding 430 left to go in the first Polly Double up on Berkeley, 8-4. Finney from the right wing, short. Long Beach Poly off and running after they collect the rebound. From the left wing for three, kisses the rim and bounces Berkeley way, but Howard can't hang onto it and knocks it out of bounds. You know, the breaks are going to have to go Berkeley's way, and in those situations, Howard has to come down with that rebound. You cannot give extra possessions here to Poly. Modern Day, the defending D1 champ. In fact, they three-peated, beating Berkeley last year. Didn't make it this year. Another three from the left wing, this time down and through by Lamb as it's an 11-4 Long Beach Poly lead. Full court pressure from Long Beach Poly. Berkeley in trouble, throwing it away once again. 
So you have to admire the defensive play of the guards for Long Beach Poly. Yeah, they're really trapping and making things difficult here for the Berkeley Yellow Jackets. Berkeley has to do a much better job of handling that pressure or else it's gonna be a long afternoon again here for the Yellow Jackets. Media timeout, 345 left to go in the first quarter, 11-4. Long Beach Poly with the lead. Do you wanna watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Carl Bugs is the head coach of Long Beach Poly. He actually a Castlemont graduate, Castlemont in Oakland. He played football, baseball, and basketball, and then was a shortstop on the baseball team, got recruited to Long Beach State where he played in the outfield. He liked the Long Beach area so much, he decided to stay. He's been there ever since. Yeah, and he's really built a good program, a great program there with the, with the Jackrabbits. As we said, they were had a fourth straight title. We're on their way to the fifth where they were upset by a local uh, Oak Ridge team in the Division One. That team led by Sarah James is now playing over at Stanford. Great knowledge on the Southern California bracket as Long Beach Poly out of the timeout, 345 with the inbound right in front of the official table here at the Sleep Train Arena. Erica Carter with the ball being guarded by Howard. This is the matchup to keep your eye on. Carter firing it to a teammate. Loose ball. And Not sure what they call it. Looks like I it's going to be a call a timeout. Oh yeah, we're going to get a twenty, a thirty second. I'm sorry. So timeout called on the floor. Still waiting to see who that gets registered to. It goes Long Beach Poly, so they're in trouble and called a timeout. Yeah, a smart play there by Coach Bugs to be able to call a timeout there from the sideline, and I like the intensity there by Berkeley. I did like that matchup there. You saw for a moment there between Howard and Carter. Would like to see them two go at it. Uh, and hopefully, I'm sure we will here throughout the uh, course of the, the remainder of the game. Coach Bugs saying that is the key matchup. He put Carter on Howard. She is the best defender on this Long Beach Poly team. One of the big concerns for Coach Bugs was not only Berkeley's athleticism, but he said we have to keep the ball out of the paint and we have to keep the ball out of the hands of Howard. Out of the timeout. 10 on the shot clock for Long Beach Poly. Perimeter passing. Now a drive into the lane. Matthews gets stripped by Berkeley. Loose ball. And they're going to say jump ball with four tenths of a second left. Yeah, a position and arrow favors Ber Berkeley. As Long Beach Poly looks to make a couple of substitutions into the ball game. Brianna Johnson, the five foot four freshman guard as well as Mahogany Brown, the five foot eight senior. And Kirsten, you were talking about uh, the defensive philosophy here for Pauly. Uh, Howard is gonna need to get touches here soon. She has not yet attempted to take a shot. And if I'm Berkeley, I want her shooting as often as possible. Welsh Coleman bringing the ball up. Howard finally has it on the left wing. Berkeley having problems catching the ball, but Finney collects. Finney gets it off to Welch Coleman. Welch Coleman. Finding a wide open teammate from the left wing. The three attempt misses. Long Beach Poly with the rebound. Tough, tough defense there by the Jackrabbits. Long Beach Poly driving, trying to convert on the fast break. No go. And Berkeley bringing it right back. Players go flying. And that one looked to hurt. Yeah. Is that Welch Coleman yeah, it's again? Yeah, Welch Coleman. That's what oh I was going to say. Goodness. Welch Coleman tumbling again. And you wonder how much, how much, how often Welch Coleman is going to be taking these tumbles. Second team foul on Long Beach Poly. Berkeley with a fresh shot clock in their half court offense. Nice look from Howard. And again, Welch Coleman on her back. But Long Beach Poly with the rebound. Long Beach Poly dominating the boards. Absolutely. They're doing a great job. They're giving, if they have an opportunity, it's only one opportunity, one and done for the Yellow Jackets, and then it's Poly on the move. 
Lamb with the ball, 10 on the shot clock. It's Berkeley in zone defense. Lamb for three from the top of the left up top, and the ball bouncing around. The ball just bouncing, bouncing Long Beach Polly's way at this point. Yeah, I think also, I just think Polly's just a quick step quicker to the ball. Great move, great execution as Matthews. What a spark she's been. No one even spoke about Matthews with me from both of the coaches, and she's had a lovely game thus far. Eight points as Polly leads at 13-14 with 13-4 with 90 seconds left. You know, in championship games, there's always some Munson player that steps up, and it might be Matthews today. Berkeley throws it away. Brianna Johnson trying to go coast to coast. She gets hacked and will head to the line to shoot two. And you see, Kirsten, it just seems to me that Pauly is just a step quicker than Berkeley. And already I see Berkeley somewhat flustered, a little frustrated, and they cannot get the, into their own heads. They need to be able to play poised and stay committed to what they're doing or else it's going to be a long afternoon here for the Yellow Jackets. The freshman Johnson at the line misses her first as Long Beach Poly checks in. Erica Carmen, the five foot ten junior as well as Chloe Kellum. Kellum a six foot senior forward. She's given a verbal commitment to UC Irvine. One a two effort from Johnson and Polly up 14-4 with a minute 21 left to go in the first. Berkeley having all sorts of problems, but they break the press here and then just some wild dribbling. Yeah. Just no control of the ball as Eskridge turns it over. Yeah, Berkeley's going to have to settle down. I don't, I'm not sure if that's the inexperience or the youth here at this level, but uh, I would expect Rachel Howard is going to have to step in here at some point. Minute left to go in the first 15 on the shot clock for Long Beach Poly, the Jackrabbits. Shot attempt way off its mark, but again, it just goes into the hands of Pauly, and then some drainage by Carmen from the left baseline. Ber Berkeley just not able to handle this pressure, and then Pauly making the Yellow Jackets pay. Eskridge gets it to Howard. Howard. Trying to throws up a prayer. How did that go down? And a chance to make it three. Is that her first attempt of the ball game? That is her first attempt, I believe. Yeah, that is her first attempt there, uh, Kirsten. And if I'm Coach Draper, again, I need to make sure that Rachel Howard is touching the ball on as many possessions as you can and making sure that it winds up with her. Get her open. She needs to have more shot attempts than what she's had so far. Third team foul, second on Erica Carter, who is on the bench. Howard rims out very uncharacteristically. And Polly pushing the pace. Polly missing widely from the right side. Now from the left baseline, long two, back iron. And Berkeley, chance for a fast break. Eskridge trying to lay it in from the left side. And it doesn't go down. And however, gosh, so many players hitting yeah. the floor. Just so hard, too. Uh, Poly players. Um, it's going to be signaled Berkeley ball. 17.7 yeah, seconds remaining in the first. It just really goes to show how big and how important this uh, game is to both squads. Howard inbounds. And a block from Poly. It's going to stay Berkeley ball. A good interior defense here by the... Jackrabbits, making it really difficult here for Berkeley to get anything going. Howard gets the ball inbounds. 12 seconds left. Eskridge with the ball, top of the arc. Eskridge throws it to a fan wearing a Chicago Bears jersey in the front row. Is that Chicago Bears? That looks like a Browns jersey. Yeah, <laughs> Cleveland it's a Brown, Browns. Cleveland I messed Browns. up my wow. Bears and Browns. Oh, goodness. Nine seconds remaining. Polly with a 10-point lead, rolls the ball in. Gets the ball to the left wing, pass down low, but goes through a teammate's hands, and it's Berkeley ball with three point. Nope, they're going to call it Jackrabbit ball with 3.2 seconds remaining. Berkeley needs to make sure Capali does not score here in this final possession, in this final 3.2. Lamb to inbound. The lob. 
Caught by Kellum. Kellum gets blocked, goes back into her hands. First quarter is over, and it belongs to Long Beach. Polly, the team from Southern California, making a statement here early. 16-6, they lead. Play on sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Matthews with eight points already. Lamb with five to lead Pauly. Three players with two for Berkeley. Now Long Beach, I love these statistics. statistics. Long Beach has attempted coming into this game more than 1,800 threes on the season. Yeah, they live by the three, but uh, uh, it's nice to see that they're trying to make their damage, do their damage inside. Yes, they have put up, uh, yes, they, they have put up a, a, a few three attempts, but look at their field goal at, you know, percentage, five of 18 and only six of those threes. So they're really trying to do their damage inside and try to take advantage of their athleticism, their size on the Berkeley Yellow Jackets. Long Beach Poly this morning, a shoot around at Sacramento High School. Then having a team lunch together made by Team Mom, Booster President Shamel Park Lamb. Spaghetti and pasta at the hotel. Carbs are so important when you're getting ready to uh, win a state title. Long Beach Poly right to left, first possession of the second quarter, up 16 to 6 over Berkeley High. Ball in the left wing, down low to the left post. Great moves down low. Everything but a finish from Mahogany Brown, Berkeley ball. Yeah, I like the idea of Berkeley moving into a zone here to try to keep everything on the perimeter there for the Yellow Jackets. They're getting beat inside, so keep them on the outside. Force them to shoot jumpers from outside of the key. Carter returns, playing with two fouls as well as Kayla Morgan. Morgan, the senior, will head to Kansas in the fall. Berkeley trying to find some consistency. They break the press and the swattage from Matthews. Matthews having an outstanding state championship game thus far as Long Beach Poly goes to work. Runner high off the glass. I believe that was Matthews, I was, yeah. Was that Matthews <laughs> I again? I thought it was. I, no, I'm sorry, I always got the number wrong there. They're saying that was Erica Carter. Okay, yeah. so Carter off the bench with a nice little runner. Berkeley in its half set offense. Long Beach sticking with this man defense. Get it into Howard, top of the arc, rims out, and great positioning by Matthews at the left post for the rebound. Yeah, those are, I was going to say, those are the kind of shot attempts you want for Rachel Howard. Carter with the miss coming back, and Berkeley collects. And you can see Rachel Howard cutting her hand up there, upset that she didn't get not the she did not get the ball. She thought she had the advantage. And Berkeley throwing it away. Howard has turned the ball over five times already. Howard, who will head to USF, wanted to play for Jennifer Az, and who wouldn't? That's a uh, great coach, you know, Jennifer Az to to play for. 6.34 left to go in the half. 12 point lead for Pauly with the ball. Lamb sending it over to the right wing. Down to the baseline. Howard defending Carter. Or Matthews, excuse me, Matthews. Maybe got a little bit of a swat in the nose. And Howard with the steal on the cross court pass. Howard one on two, runner in the lane, way short, air ball. Thank you. Howard probably took off for that layup a little too early and unfortunately was way short on her attempt. Almost two minutes gone here in the second quarter. Polly is really looking like the experienced team. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, battle tested for Berkeley. Obviously the same yeah. to be said for Long Beach. Carter with the three attempt, doesn't go down. She falls down and out of bounds on Polly. so Berkeley ball. 
you know, Berkeley doing a better job here in this quarter of keeping everything on the perimeter. They just need to be able to score on the offensive end. Sierra Franklin into the game for Berkeley with a touch. And Welch Coleman now running the show. Howard looking to set a screen. Welch Coleman kicks it out to the left wing. And another block by Matthews. Long Beach Poly, good numbers two on one. Howard defends on Matthews. Nope, that was Kayla Morgan. And Berkeley calls a timeout. 5.23 remaining in the first. Berkeley with a big puzzle to solve. Long Beach Poly up 20 to 6. We'll have live coverage of spring sports from around the state of California in April and May. Join us this spring for championship coverage across California, including baseball, softball, track, and more. All brought to you by your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Again, modern day, three-peated last year, beating Berkeley. And I had a chance to revisit that game, and Berkeley only, Berkeley led after the first quarter only two points in the second quarter from Berkeley, and that kind of sunk the ship. It was, a, it was really tough. It was really hard to watch because Modern Day really thoroughly dominated Berkeley there. As well, I mean, right now, Pauly seems like to be headed that way, uh, unable for the Yellow Jackets to get anything inside. They're dominating the interior defense, the, Yellow, the Jackrabbits are. Another block from Polly out of the timeout. Berkeley with the possession. And loose ball on the floor. And they are going to call that foul on Berkeley's young blood. And Kirsten Long Beach Polly has four block shots already. And it seems that if they're not blocking a shot, they're deflecting a pass. So interior game not happening, not going so well here for the Berkeley Yellow Jackets. Well, and that was Coach Bugs. He wants to keep Berkeley out of the paint. And he's been able to do that. Less than five to go in the first half. Long Beach Poly with the ball. A three attempt from the left wing, short, and Berkeley ball. So Berkeley will take a few more of those. Yeah, if Berkeley can get it going on the offensive end, this zone defense has worked well. The only couple of points have come up on uh, fast break opportunities for Ber the Yeah, Berkeley Jack left to right, breaking the press. However, getting tied up is Sierra Franklin, and that's going to go Long Beach Poly's way. You know, they've been able to break the press a couple of times here, Kirsten, but Long Beach Poly doing such a good job of getting back in transition that they make it so hard for Berkeley to score inside. Oh, well, they're going to actually, that stays with Berkeley. So 23 on the shot clock, 442 in regulation here in the first half. Howard, the recipient of the inbound. So much pressure on Howard to produce, and she has been pretty cold thus far as Long Beach Poly pushing the pace the other way. Nice feed inside, kicks out, three from the left wing, back iron, and again, Long Beach Poly with opportunities. Finally, Berkeley comes down with it. Welch Coleman decides to hold up. Pulled up her dribble, however, someone needs to come help. That's always danger zone. Three attempt way off the mark. The post players from Long Beach Poly are really doing a great job getting position. They sure are. And threes are just missing by miles on both sides of the floor as yep. a timeout on the floor. A media timeout, 354 left to go in the first half. Long Beach Poly up 26. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SVP. Alongside Joey Gonzalez, I'm Kirsten Fairchild. Thank you for joining us. Well, after one nail biter after another, this game, this, there was a high standard set by the earlier games. This one, Long Beach Poly has to be so happy to be up. Yeah, I mean, they, they're up uh, putting a lot of pressure on Berkeley right now. Long Beach probably has had a tough time scoring here in this quarter, but they really don't have to score that much. Uh, Berkeley only has six points for the game. I don't believe they have scored, looking at the numbers, I'm trying to see whether yep. or not they've scored this quarter. They have not scored this quarter, and that's due to, I mean, the, the Long Beach Poly defense. So defense has really played a key role here, especially in this quarter of 
if Berkeley can figure out that uh, defense or hit shots from the outside, it could be a different story. What they want to do is, though, definitely cut this lead here and try to get inside. Uh, right now they're down 14, so you want to get inside at least eight points. Berkeley, two of 13 from the floor, two of 15, including beyond the arc. That's a 15% shooting percentage. Out of the timeout, they've got the ball. Berkeley bringing it up. Welch Coleman with the ball. Welch Coleman penetrating. Nice pass to Finney. Finney, however, with the miss. And they're going to say last touch, Pauly. So Berkeley ball. Pauly's doing such a great job there of collapsing the lane and collapsing on the, the, the person with the ball who's driving the lane and making it really difficult for Berkeley to get anything inside. Berkeley three of six from beyond the arc in the NorCal Regional. Too hard of a shot attempt by Finney. Hits the back iron, and Long Beach Poly comes right back, pushes the pace, launches a three of their own, doesn't fall, but they always earn themselves other opportunities. A runner missed on the follow, and just continuing to get offensive rebounds. Another three, this time from the right wing. You know, Long Beach Poly not shooting so well either. No, they're not, but looking at the... Uh Rebounds here, rebounding numbers. Long Beach Poly has had second chance opportunities, have 11 offensive boards for the afternoon. Welch Coleman. 12 seconds left on the shot clock and the strip. Franklin gets stripped. And just kind of some ugly basketball going on as Long Beach Poly making plenty of mistakes as well and a player control fouled goes against the Jackrabbits. Yeah, you said it, uh, Kirsten, just nothing going real crisp. It just seems to be hectic basketball. And give credit to, to Pauly. I mean, they, I think they want to muck it up a little bit, make the pace hectic here for Berkeley, make things very difficult for, for them to get some open shots. Ella Jane McCoy, the five foot eight sophomore, checks into the lineup for Berkeley. 2.30 left to go. Long Beach up 20 to six. Berkeley pulls up its dribble. Howard beyond the arc, front iron. But Berkeley earns itself a rare second chance. Howard again, pump fake. Ball bouncing Berkeley's way, and Pauly comes down with it. Pauly looking to score in transition. And boy, Welch Coleman down again, this time holding her leg. No call, she barely walk. Howard, it's just getting ugly out there. It is. Uh, bodies flying all over the place. You can see Welch Coleman seems to really be in pain. You know, and what I'm really not seeing, there's not a lot of crisp passing here by Berkeley. Give credit to Pauly, but, you know, uh, there's so much dribble penetration going on. Pauly has got that keyed in, and what they're doing, just collapsing the lane, making it hard for the dribble, you know, person dribbling into the lane to find anything open. So... I want to see a lot more ball movement on around the perimeter and some cutting here for Berkeley. Welch Coleman stays in the game, visibly limp limping. That floor can be awfully hard when you hit it as hard as she does, and she throws it away, but the ball bounces Berkeley's way after the takeaway. Less than two to go. Berkeley has not scored in this quarter. Howard launches a three. It's off its mark, and Pauly with the rebound. Chloe Kellum making it happen. Just some wild misses on Long Beach Poly's side of the basket, not even hitting net, rim, backboard, nothing. And, you know, going back on Berkeley, unfortunately that Howard can't get anything to go. When she does have those open looks, it's not falling for her. Finney turn around in the paint. She gets fouled. That ball bounces off the rim, and Finney will collect her breath, and with 119 left to go, look to score for Berkeley first time in this quarter. Yeah, it's not been a pretty quarter. Scoring real down, score, scoring has been really down here in this quarter. And Pauly has made it in fact four points so far the entire quarter here uh, on both sides of the ball. Kirsten, not not pretty basketball. 
Desire Finney misses her first, walks away to collect herself, makes her second, however, and Berkeley has scored a point with 119 left to go in the second quarter. Polly still leads 20 to 7. Polly with some cross court passes. They just happen to find the way into the recipient's hand. Loose ball underneath the floor. You always hear the term active hands. If you, as a coach, your defense, you got to get those hands up, get them moving, try to get a hand on the ball, deflect a pass. Those lead to turnovers. 62 seconds left to go in the first half. On Beach Polly inbounds. Baseline jumper from the right side, no good, into the hands of Welch Coleman. Welch Coleman taking her defender. Pass down low, and Berkeley finally makes a field goal. This one from the left post with the left hand. Nice move, all set up there by Welch Coleman's dribble penetration. 35 seconds left to go in the first half. 20 on the game, shot clock. Three attempt back iron. Polly's just ice cold from beyond the arc. Howard with the rebound, falls down. Welch Coleman, 23 seconds remaining. Realizes she better pull up. Howard fires a pass into the paint. Turnaround jumper, no good. And it's Polly Ball with 13.6 seconds. It looked to me that Berkeley was looking to try to go on a mini run if they can get Cut this lead inside of 10. Would have been nice. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not they're going to be able to do that here in these final 13 seconds. Polly rolls the ball in. Johnson over to Brown. Top of the arc by Kellum. Traveling called. So Berkeley gets it back with 5.2 seconds remaining. Trailing 20 to 9. An opportunity here for the Yellow Jackets to cut this lead inside of 10. Ball inbounded to Howard. Howard taking it to the rack. No call. Offensive chance by Finney for the putback. Doesn't fall. 20 to 9. Long Beach outscoring Berkeley 4 to 3 in that second quarter i think it would be safe to say neither team happy with their performance in their second quarter your opinion on the subject well i could say that paulie is very happy with their defensive effort that they've you know they've gone cold from the uh shooting wise on the offensive end but have not allowed berkeley to cut the lead while they've had plenty of opportunity uh, you know, what I want to see coming from Berkeley is start some movement around outs on the outside, some movement around the perimeter uh, to get an opportunity to get some things open. Spread it out. Everything is so packed inside. They're really packing the paint. They're going to have to move the ball, move some cutters, get some open, come off some screens. A lot of it just seems to be one-on-one -on -one basketball, maybe some pick and rolls uh, that are happening that uh, where the, the – ball handler is going straight to the basket and Paulie's defense totally reads that right off the bat, right off the get-go. So they were just really packing the paint here on, on Berkeley, making it difficult because that's where all of Berkeley's shot attempts have been coming from inside the paint. Berkeley shooting 13% from the field. Long Beach Poly 20% from the field. The score simply anemic in the first half. Long Beach Poly up 20 to 9. I'm sure very lively conversations, lively coaching going on for both these veteran coaches at the break. We'll see if the quality improves. Back with our halftime show live at Sleep Train Arena. You are listening to PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5-10. Touchdown, Wolverines! 
How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown. Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side. Cut shot. Kept alive. Back in one by Cathedral. And this one is out as Castanon Hill sends it wide. And the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball. Swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take. Blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the Stag. Runner at third is Chavez. 8-2 to two the score. Bottom of the seventh. The 1-2. Popped in the air. This should do it. Corda Posse says it's mine. Now he's fading on it. And he can't make the catch, but Gaff comes in from center field and does. Congratulations to the St. Mary's Rams, a three-peat. They win it 8-2 to two against Franklin to take the series two games to none. But this is time to run an offensive set that you've done all through the season in practice. Yeah. And you get, also, you know, you get it to your to your hottest player right now, just like they're getting to Eichhorst right here. He's going to try to create some space, find somebody on the backside that's open. Eichhorst flush out to the right. Oh, breaks free of a player. Eichhorst on his own, shoots and scores, bounces the shot home. Kuz can't handle the shot. Eichhorst takes off the shirt and the helmet. And how about that? Alex called it. Eichhorst, after sustaining the injury in the third quarter of play, has scored the game winner with 22 seconds gone in the overtime period. Dog pile on the field. Marin Academy take it. A fantastic finish to this game. And, well, I hope his other ankle isn't hurting after this. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock at the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter sets under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, oh Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 
64-yard touchdown run, his fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing. And the <laughs> as I look over to our partners of KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near the goal line. Keep those Lowell fans quiet over there. Lum sets it up for Pang. Long, it's out. Low, a magnificent seven titles in the San Francisco section in dramatic style as they pull out a fantastic victory over a spirited Galileo Lions team. They win the fourth game, 31-29, and they take the 2012 Academic Athletic Association San Francisco section title. Officials say no five-second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side, Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game, 20. Long Beach Poly up on Berkeley, 20 to nine. Welcome back to the Sleep Train Arena in our state's capital, Sacramento, California for the CIF Girls Division I Basketball Championship game. Kirsten Fairchild's Joey Gonzalez bringing you the action court sign. Thank you for joining us on PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Joey, just not a lot of positive things you can say about that first half from actually either squad. No, no, uh, obviously, Looking at it, looking at numbers, when the second quarter score is four to three, you can look at offensive production is really struggling. Maybe some of it has to do with defense. Some of it it just has to do with just poor shot, shot selection. One, we have Long Beach probably shooting seven of thirty-five, Berkeley shooting three of twenty-three. So no real, you know, neither having shooting the ball very well. Berkeley only shooting 13% for the game. It's really disappointing for, for me from my standpoint here. But Long Beach probably not much better, 20%. Now, granted, Pauly has the 11-point lead. And so if I'm Berkeley, I mean, I'm looking at some wasted opportunities. No real, uh, no really, I'm looking at, I need to get Rachel Howard going. She's only one of eight. And those opportunities came few and far between. So when she has had the opportunities, the, the, the shots aren't falling for her. Um, so, and just not really clean play on both sides. Playing really hard. You know, I want to give the girls credit because they're playing very hard. And a lot of, it's a very physical game. We've seen a lot of tumbles here throughout. Offensive rebounding practically non-existent for Berkeley. Just four and none from Howard, none from Youngblood. That means your post players are not earning any second chances. Matthews leading the way for Long Beach Poly. 8.6 rebounds, three blocks. Lamb, five points, two rebounds. And four players have scored two points for Berkeley. Had a chance to speak with Cheryl Draper, the head coach for Berkeley before the game. Her twin sister was on the phone with her, calling in from Springfield, Illinois, wanting to know how she can watch the game. So let her know it's on playonsports.com. So a big hi to Cheryl Draper's twin sis out in Springfield. There we go. Hey, Coach Draper really trying to coach up her Yellow Jackets, having an opportunity here, want to try to get out on the open court and limit opportunities here for the Jackrabbits, if you're the Yellow Jackets. Just want to mention the Draper sisters went to Bradley University in Illinois, and Carol Draper, the twin sister in question, the MVP of that Bradley University team. Berkeley needs some help here. They, they really have their work cut out for them. 20 to 9, the score as we begin the second half. Again, this is 
been a full slate of games today. Southern California representatives have won every single one. We've seen some nail biters, heartbreaker, OT game in the boys, but Southern California has come out on top throughout the afternoon. And they continue to dominate in this ball game right here. So Berkeley needs to start hitting, the, you know, hitting some outside shots. Try to oh, if once they start hitting those outside shots, it might open up things for them in the lane, uh, because scoring inside the key, so scoring in the paint has been really difficult against these Jackrabbits. Second half underway, Long Beach Poly in their green and gold, left to right here at Sleep Train Arena, Berkeley in zone. Ball on the left wing. A lot of patience shown by Long Beach Poly on this opening possession of the second half. However, the shot attempt off its mark by Erica Carter, Berkeley ball. Well, yeah, I gotta give credit, coach here, credit here to Coach Draper because once Berkeley went to that zone, that's when things got very difficult there for Pauly to score. Welch Coleman, who will nurse some bruises tomorrow for sure with the ball. Working on Dawson. Bounce pass over to Eskridge, left side. 15 on the shot clock, tries to get it in the paint. And the ball deflected out of bounds. Still is Berkeley ball. It's almost as if it wouldn't be a championship game without some bumps and bruises along the way. It's a long, long season. Got to leave it all on the floor tonight. Howard off the inbound for three. That looks like it might go. It does. Howard with three, and Berkeley fans finally can put their hands together and clap for something. Yeah, and if you're Berkeley, you see Howard hit that splash down that three. You hope that gets her going. That gives her some juice and some momentum. Minute gone in the third. Pauly with the ball, an eight-point lead, and the Jackrabbits throw it away. Berkeley, is this a little opening, a few little cracks here in Long Beach Pauly? You can hear the crowd behind us, and you can feel it a little bit, even though it's only the first points, first bucket here of the third quarter. Uh, you can start to see, feel things maybe swaying. Welch Coleman bringing it up. Over to Howard, right wing. Howard catching Finney at the right elbow. Welch Coleman now back out. Ten on the shot clock. Welch Coleman from the same shot that Howard just launched one from. However, front rim, Long Beach Poly ball. Long Beach Poly pushing the pace. Has it in the left corner. Wild cross-court pass. Carter from three right in front of her bench. She drains it. The threes, they are falling at the floodgates open up. 23-12 as Berkeley comes right back. Maybe both teams shook the quad webs off. Welch Get Coleman called on the walk. Shake those cobwebs off and get those some scoring going here on both sides. It's a lot of rust to shake off there. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, you know, it's been a week in between games. Yes. It's the longest stretch these teams go throughout the season with no games. It is a long time, as you said there, uh, Kirsten. They're playing a lot, so a couple of times a week, a couple of times during the week. Well, actually, I guess six days since this is a Friday game. Howard with another defensive rebound after the Long Beach Poly miss. Welch Coleman. Taking the lane on the left side, passing the paint to a streaking Finney, and Finney gets it to go down. Berkeley on the move. Uh, first points in the paint there since the first quarter for the Yellow Jackets. Nine-point lead now for Long Beach Poly. Dawson walks it up. Junior over to Morgan from the right wing. Another three goes down. This time it's Lamb in front of her bench. 5.05 left to go in the third. Polly up 26-14. That corner three is always a sweet spot for some of these shooters. They're gonna, Berkeley's going to need to close out on that three. Welch Coleman staying with it. High off the glass. Hits the floor once again. Boy, if we had a dollar. Tough, tough player out there. Hits the floor. Is playing hard and grinding one out. With the right hand from the right side. Cuts the deficit to 10. Matthews 
Gets the feed, takes the left post, draws the foul from Finney, a chance to make it three. The problem here now is it seems that Pauly is, or I should say Berkeley is trading threes, twos for threes. And anytime you start doing that, the game starts to get away from you. That foul called on Youngblood, I believe, as three-point play has made Matthews stand out today as Long Beach Poly steals the ball. Matthews with the ball, top of the arc, over to Lamb. You know, if you're Berkeley, you are got to be disappointed how Pauly is scoring here. Great look down low as Morgan gets hacked. She'll head to the line to shoot two. It's almost as though Berkeley may have let some opportunities slip there in that second quarter. But both teams really went cold in that second quarter. Things turning around here in the third. Youngblood called on her second. Two team fouls on Berkeley as Morgan misses her first. This is not a good free throw shooting team from Long Beach as she misses her second, just averaging 57 point percentage of 57 from the line. But again, Long Beach Poly cleaning up on the glass. That time a turnover gets it back to Berkeley, but Long Beach Poly almost had a second chance opportunity. Berkeley is gonna have to do a much better job on the defensive glass here to keep Pauly off of it. Midway through the third, Berkeley with the ball trailing 29-16. A three attempt is an air ball. Howard really trying to settle everyone down out there. Yeah, Askridge looked like she was very nervous taking that shot. Really rushed it, in fact was just on her tiptoes and never really had an opportunity. She thought she had an opening. What's happening right here, and I think what Rachel Howard is doing is telling her teammates, hey, slow things down. You're not gonna make up Sorry, my math is 13. off. 13 points. <laughs> <laughs> 13, I was points. To draw it for you. <laughs> 13 points here in, in a couple of minutes, so they really have to run that offensive set. 3.49 left to go in the third. Media timeout on the floor. Long Beach Poly up 29 16. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SVP. Joey Gonzalez, Kirsten Fairchild, bringing you the action on playonsports.com. Thank you so much for joining us. A big hello to our listeners outside the state of California. A lot of excitement for tomorrow. A chance to see some of the top recruits in the nation, top, or at least to hear them in action. Sacred Heart Cathedral. Girls and boys lost earlier today in the Division Three title games. The only school to have two teams, both of their teams, playing here at the state championships this year. Out of the timeout, Long Beach Poly with the ball. Berkeley calls off the dogs. They've been sticking with just a half-court defense. Long Beach Poly with a 13-point lead. Berkeley made it interesting there for a few flashes as a three-put up. Berkeley... However, can't grab the rebound, and Kayla Morgan has really come into the second half playing well. She has a chance for a three-point play. And that's one of the dangers there of playing the zone defense there, Kirsten, is when you're out of, posi you're, you're out of position to rebound, you don't have that body to box out and let some people get inside for those rebounds. Third personal on Welch Coleman. Third team foul on Berkeley. Berkeley avoiding the trap, bringing it up. Welch Coleman, jump stop. Gets it to Eskridge, who has problems catching it. Long Beach Poly ball. Yeah, Berkeley not able to get things going here. Now midway through the third quarter. Oh, start of the quarter on a good roll, on some good tempo, but then some made threes here to, for Pauly, kind of extinguish that uh, hot start there for the Yellow Jackets. Sierra Franklin into the lineup. Welch Coleman stays on the floor as Morgan is stripped. Berkeley ball. Berkeley never carry, you know, they don't ever have a big roster. Roster, not a lot of players on the team. No, they always play with a short roster, a short bench. 
And the players really go hard and long. Howard with a nice feed. However, Matthews there. Nope, she's called on the foul. That'll send Finney to the line to shoot two. Well, an opportunity here for Berkeley to score here with time stopped on the clock. And really trying to chip, chip away here at this poly lead. Rachel Howard in the Northern California championship game. 23 points. Nine rebounds, three steals, excuse me, three three-pointers. She has one here today. Yeah, she needs to find her stroke, and maybe, you know, that's probably one of the, the, the situations, the differences we were talking about there, Kirsten, is it's been a week since she's been able to shoot in a live game, and that can have a, you know, a big effect on a shooter. Both free throws made. Polly's lead is 31-18 with 2.30 left to go in the third. Knocked out of bounds, stays Long Beach Poly's ball. Long Beach Poly hasn't been here since 2008. Berkeley here last year, but a disappointing loss. Three attempt, back iron, and Finney skying high for the rebound, but falls on her way down. Ball bounces Franklin's way, however, and Berkeley holds onto it. Welch Coleman being pestered, a little pushing and shoving out there, no whistles. Welch Coleman. You know, it's loose ball on the floor and traveling called on Berkeley. I, Berkeley is just not ready for the ball. I mean, the hands need to be soft. I, they're right. not able to catch the ball. I, I, I say they're playing too fast. And, you know, you you start to see those kind of little mistakes. They're rushing. They're trying to get, you know, make up this point differential in, in, in a hurry. And they need to slow things down. They have not been able to, to do that just yet. Nearing the two-minute mark, Polly with the ball, a 31-18 lead, third quarter action of the 2013 CIF Girls Division Three Championships. Long Beach Poly playing catch beyond the perimeter. Johnson in to run the offense for the Jackrabbits. Five on the shot clock. Matthews from the right elbow. Down and through. What a game she's having. Perfect, perfect offensive execution. Got the right shot. Got the shot that they wanted. Worked down the clock all the way down to only a couple of seconds left on the shot clock. 15-point lead for Long Beach. Berkeley with 90 seconds. Welch Coleman from the left elbow rims out. Matthews there for the rebound. Still not be able to find the bottom of the net. Matthews to Carter. Carter from lays it in from the right side. Everything going Long Beach Pauly's way. 35-18 lead with a minute left to go. Yeah, here's Pauly really now imposing their will on Berkeley. Welch Coleman. Challenging her defender, throws it up from the left side, high off the glass. Again, she hits the floor. This time, however, the shot goes down. It's a 15-point ball game. Well, it seems that Welch Coleman wouldn't be playing her game if she wasn't hitting the floor on every possession. Long Beach Polly, Carter feeling it. 10-footer from the right side, 37-20 the score. 30 seconds left to go, 25 on the shot clock. Scoring has really opened up here. Welch Coleman working on the freshman. Coleman, nice pass. And it's going to stay Berkeley ball. It was knocked out of bounds. 14 on the shot, 17 in regulation as Long Beach returns Chloe Kellum. And Matthews earns herself a rest. She can jog off with pride. And Matthews, a great game there by Matthews. 13 points, seven rebounds, three How block shots. Howard to inbound. The ball hits Welch Coleman in the head, who's called on a blocking foul. That is going to be her fourth foul. Again, she has to pick herself up off the floor. Yeah, Welch Coleman going really hard and throwing her body in there and unfortunately probably more of a frustration foul there to turn the ball over. Long Beach Poly going to its deep bench as the freshman the five foot seven guard Sierra Belvin checks in. 
Mahogany, Mahogany Brown looking to return as well. 14 seconds remaining. It's a 17 point lead for Polly with the ball. Welsh Coleman will walk to the bench as Eskridge checks in. Johnson over to Brown. Johnson, five on the shot clock, drives the lane, gets stripped by Eskridge, stays Long Beach Polyball, 4.5 seconds remaining. Coach Draper saying it's Berkeley ball. And the inbound pass hits the backboard, so it is Berkeley yes. ball, and it took 3.4 seconds off. Yeah, interesting that uh, it time went off the clock. It should have been 4.5. Howard with a runner. She falls down, no whistle. Not the prettiest game of the afternoon, but it doesn't matter for Long Beach Pauly as they really put together a 17-point quarter, 37-20. They lead Berkeley. We'll have live coverage of spring sports from around the state of California in April and May. Join us this spring for championship coverage across California, including baseball, softball, track and more all brought to you by your destination for high school sports play on sports.com berkeley has improved in some areas but so is long beach Polly, and really jada matthews what a game she's having five of nine from the floor seven rebounds three block shots one steal she's really had a great great afternoon she has and she's really answered the call here and, and played a great game here against Berkeley Berkeley unfortunately started the quarter strong but really faded in once Pauly had hit those two threes and then there was that three-point play it just got out of hand there for uh, for the Yellow Jackets Long Beach Pauly has played 12 players They're, they've got a deep bench and you know looking at the numbers here with a short bench here for Berkeley only going seven deep you know it's really wearing here on Berkeley and you wonder you know I I forget about the week off you wonder how much that affects these players not only in their shooting but also their energy level as well well and sometimes when you've got that time off you feel your injuries more but, oh that's another factor yes some Absolutely. And, you know, we've heard from the games we've done today, Joey, a couple of key <laughs> players from teams, you know, have suffered season-ending injuries. Howard works herself loose as Berkeley goes to work here in the fourth quarter, trailing 37-20. Her three attempt, however, out of bounds, and it's Long Beach volleyball. You know, and it's unfortunate here, uh, Kirsten, when I see those short layup, short perimeter shots either coming front iron or just airballing, what that tells me, those are some tired legs. Yes. And uh, I think Rachel Howard has played a lot of minutes here, and she's just almost just tired. Has a heavily bandaged left elbow and wrist, Howard. Again, these seasons are long, but this is what they play for. Absolutely. If you even have a chance of setting a goal as a state championship, here it is. Got to fight through the pain. Five on the shot clock for Long Beach Folly. Wide open look for the freshman, Brianna Johnson, who drains the tray. It's a 20-point lead for Long Beach Poly. It's largest of the night. Welch Coleman. And it makes things very difficult to come bring home a championship, state championship. Out of the timeout, Long Beach Poly. Matthews comes in, tries to lay it in from the left side. Her shot does not fall, but she'll head to the line to shoot two. This is, I believe, this is the fourth team that they, fourth time that uh, Berkeley has met Long Beach Poly in the state finals, and they've played modern day twice and have been able to, not been able to crack that top of that hill there. Howard called on the foul, fifth team foul. Well, I saw both head coaches, Coach Bugs and Coach Draper, big hug. Big hello, said hello to the players. You know, they, they, it's exciting, it's fun for them. It's been a few years for this matchup. I don't think it's that fun for Coach Draper right now as after the free throws, Long Beach Poly up 41-22 with 6.15 left to go in the fourth. You know, whether you win or lose, you want to play well in a state championship game. Berkeley 
running out of time to recover. Absolutely. Rachel Howard doing everything she can to get things going, try to get the runner there that time. And you can just see it, it, it's not just the exhaustion of, of the, this game, but the exhaustion of an entire season. And for Rachel Howard specifically, perhaps maybe the exhaustion of a career. Morgan picks up her first. Second team foul as Howard at the line to shoot two. Makes her first. Howard's fifth point. Berkeley actually led by Welch Coleman with six. And now Howard with... Her six points, 6.05 left to go. Long Beach Poly up 41-24. Both teams scoring four points here thus far in the fourth quarter. Johnson on the left side, throws it off, off the glass, doesn't fall. And Berkeley ball. You know, we're coming into the game. Berkeley had to have one of its the backcourt had to have one of the best games of the season. Unfortunately, all around, Berkeley has struggled throughout. Welch Coleman bringing it up. Finds Howard. Howard a little push from behind. No call. Howard taking it right hand from the left side, and she draws the contact. And we'll hit one nothing but net. 5.30 left to go. Berkeley trailing 41-26. The state title on the line. Howard, a senior boy, which she left to go out. Stripped by Finney. Finney stripping Matthews. Howard for three takes her time from the right side. Too much, but weak side rebound by Estridge. But Estridge throws it away. Fast break. Nope. Dawson pulls up. Yes. Dawson back in. Smart play there. She was going to go one on two. She had Howard coming as a closer there. Lamb to inbound. Five minutes remaining in regulation, 15 on the shot clock for the Jackrabbits of Long Beach Poly and Eskridge with the kicked ball. Eskridge, a little frustration there. Yeah, Eskridge has had a tough go at it today. Been in nothing, things not going well for Ex Eskridge. No, absolutely. A lot of a. Uh, Yellow Jackets, you could say that for. Fresh shot clock for Long Beach Poly. Berkeley with the steal, and Welch Coleman loses the handle, and you just see her frustration. Yes. Trying for the layup, just loses control. Really was looking for an opening there, trying to get out there and run. Good transition defense there by the Jackrabbits. Good Berkeley contingent of fans here. Long Beach Poly fans, will their Reuter bus left Long Beach at 8.30 a.m. this morning? A fast break run to perfection, however, still passing the ball, but a lot of open looks. Back iron from Carter and Howard with the rebound. Welch Coleman continues to drive the lane, kicks out to Eskridge in the left wing. 4.10 left to go, cross court pass to Howard. Howard working on Carter. Off the glass for Howard. And Berkeley calls a timeout. 4.02 left to play in regulation. Berkeley trailing 41-28. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Kirsten Fairchild, Joey Gonzalez, our producer Tim King, all courtside here live at Sleep Train Arena for playonsports.com's coverage of the Division I championship so, game. Something tells me, Kirsten, that the, the, with the enthusiasm that Coach Draper called that timeout, 402 on the clock, Berkeley down only 13. There's a lot of time left, especially in high school basketball when you're able to uh, uh, foul and get the opportunities here to stop some, some clock. Only player in foul trouble on either team is Welch Coleman. As out of the timeout, Long Beach Poly goes to work. Berkeley full court pressure, a zone. And Long Beach Poly breaks it. 
Dawson, however, gives it up to Welch Coleman. Welch Coleman. I think she tried to make a pass off balance and threw it away. Yeah, I was trying to find uh, Eskridge there on the corner. Which Howard was wide yeah. open down the right side. Media timeout, 3.46 left to go. 41-28, Long Beach Poly with the lead. Stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Coach Draper told me before the game, championships are all about rebounding, which is a very interesting sentiment considering that in the Sacred Heart Cathedral Alamany game, Sacred Heart Cathedral won the rebounding war but lost the ball game, right. as can often be the case. But looking at the rebounding, 29 rebounds for Long Beach Poly to 19 for Berkeley, just Five offensive rebounds for Berkeley. Well, you know, Kirsten, each coach has their philosophy, whether yes. it be rebounding, defense. whether it be their defense, winning the turnover battle is exactly. always going to think the team that makes the fewest mistakes is going to come out on top. All those, we'll call them sports cliches, so yeah. you know, but they do ring true. Yeah. It all depends on what you rest your laurels on. Uh, yeah, I even heard today, listening on the radio, some coaches talk about paint touches, how many paint touches yes. uh, happen in the paint. If they get enough touches on the paint, they're going to get a nice shooting percentage in the paint. So it all depends on what you rest your uh, philosophy on. You just have to come out on top on that uh, key uh, figure, on a key uh, stat. Out of the timeout, Long Beach Poly again facing a full court pressure defense from Berkeley. And the steal by Finney. Finney skying high and then finishing. Nope. Missing and rebound Long Beach Poly with a fast break of their own. Berkeley quickly back to play defense as Long Beach Poly taking some time. Matthews turn around in the paint over Howard. Nothing there. Welch Coleman comes down with it. You got to find Howard on this possession. You have to if you're Berkeley. I haven't seen Welch Coleman looking for her no. as of late, but now she finds her. Howard on the left wing, 12 in the shot clock. Howard tries to get it inside, and it is stolen by Morgan. You know, that was a poor pass there, I got to say, by Howard, trying to force it in to a, a post, uh, into the post where she was being double teamed. Under three to go. 12 on the shot clock. Morgan beyond the arc. Pass down low right side. That'll be a shooting foul as Morgan will head to the line to shoot too. Time was really winding down there. You know, and I want to say there's got to be, at up until that last foul, I wanted to say Berkeley was only within four of really having an opportunity to keep it close and maybe steal it. But uh, the way things have gone here, well, it looks like Polly might leave an opening here, uh, missed there by Morgan, might leave an opening here for Berkeley, depending on what they can do on the offensive end. Skyla James, the five foot seven freshman guard, replaces Eskridge out on the floor. That foul on Youngblood, that's a six team foul, so Polly in the bonus. Up next, one and two effort from Morgan. 42 28, 233 left to go. Finney bringing it up. Finney trying to get you to, you know, Howard, the, the cutter through the paint has been so well defended by Long Beach Ball. They have. They've really set their defender there down, almost double teaming. So when the cutter comes through, there's already a defender right there looking for that pass because it's been scouted so well it looks like to me scouting it's so true it's uh long beach poly seems to know what berkeley is going to do before berkeley even contemplates it berkeley runner high off the glass from the freshman johnson Four points for Johnson, two minutes left to play, 44-28, Pauly. Smart, smart play there by Johnson. I thought she just threw it up there, just looking for a call, trying to get to the line, but able to knock down the, the runner. Welch Coleman turns it over, trying to force something inside. We really haven't seen a lot of threes taken by Berkeley as of late. 
turnovers, 25 to 14. Berkeley suffering. Johnson bringing it up, working on James. Kicks it out. Three-point attempt, miss. Nice block out by Welch Coleman. Lamb can't connect. Welch Coleman practically dribbles away in traffic. Off the glass, doesn't fall. And another defensive rebound for Long Beach Poly. So Minute I, 20 left to go. One thing I wish we, I would have been able to track is how many shots have just been short for, uh, for Berkeley. So many of them have just drawn front iron. Long Beach Poly really slowing it down and just a wide open lane. Not sure what Berkeley was doing there. Erica Carter uncontested for the lay-in from the left side. Less than a minute to go. 46-28. Howard still pressing hard. Hits the backboard. And again, Long Beach Poly continue to say they've just done a great job with rebounding defensively. And Coach Bugs calls a timeout. He wants to get his reserves out on the floor. 45 seconds remaining, Long Beach Poly after three consecutive championships by a Southern California team. Other than them, hotter day, Long Beach Poly just less than a minute away from celebrating. Uh, I'm sorry, stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game. That's coming up following the game on your destination. For high school sports, play on sports.com. What I was going to say, Kirsten, it's just you know an opportunity here. It's been all Southern California here throughout the uh, throughout the day in Long Beach Poly, getting ready to celebrate another uh, a fifth state championship here uh, for their school. This one, the most decisive, however, I would have to say, of the afternoon and now evening, and we're not quite done. Another game tipping off at eight. I know you're looking forward to that one. Yeah, it should be a fun one. It's Pleasant Grove, the only Sacramento, Sacramento area school still alive in the tournament, taking on Santa Monica. Should be a fun one here, and we expect a good crowd here at Sleep Train. Out of the timeout, Long Beach Poly. Their fans are loving it. Reserves on from both squads. And Berkeley ball after the missed shot. Rachel Howard on the bench. What a career she's had at Berkeley. Certainly one of the best players ever. She will stay just head across the bay to USF. 28 seconds remaining. Skyla James gets the ball swatted away but stays Berkeley ball. And the Long Beach fans, happy they made the trip. Yeah, if you're going to come all that way, you know, you want to come and see a victory. Twenty-three seconds remaining. Berkeley inbounding underneath its basket, having some dribbling woes. Out of bounds, last touch, Long Beach Poly. Joey mentioned we'll have our player of the game announcement at the conclusion of this one. Berkeley will have to put up a shot. Five on the shot clock. Long Beach Poly with the steal. Five seconds remaining. Berkeley with the steal right back. Berkeley, good numbers for Berkeley and a block from behind, and that will do it. Long Beach Poly rushes the floor. Continuing their winning ways despite a four-year break, a 46-28 victory over Berkeley. Poly 9, you know, they were the teams left standing, and Long Beach Poly truly the champion. Really a testament to the job that both of these coaches have done for their squads. Despite the final score here, heck, Long Berkeley continues to get to this level year in and year out. 
cannot quite climb over the hump, but Shell, Coach Shell Draper has done a tremendous job over there with Berkeley. And who can, you can't say it enough there about Coach, uh, I'm sorry, about Coach Bugs there for the Jackrabbits. It was the final girls game here this Friday. Which will you remember the most? You know, I think the one that's going to stand out most to me is going to be the Sacred Heart Cathedral and uh, the, the Division Three game between Sacred Heart Cathedral and Alamany. It started out uh, really close, real tight. Alamany winning their first ever you know, girls' state title for the school. I think that's what I'm going to come away with most for this. They certainly game. traveled up in great numbers yes. from Alamany.